Hey, good morning everybody. Here we are, Friday morning. Another opportunity we've got to get in God's Word, get our dose of it, and get our day kicked off right. This morning I want to wind the week up with something that Paul wrote to Timothy, and it's about the glorious gospel of Christ. The gospel is indeed glorious, and it's glorious for many reasons. And it's very interesting of what Paul has got around uh, this statement, uh, specifically what's leading up to the statement. Um, as he says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 11 it says according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed uh, to my trust so the gospel is glorious it gives us salvation it tells us how to live right it uh, it tells us about God's love and hope and all of it. there's so many things that are glorious um, in the gospel of Christ and what makes it glorious well let's notice some things that leading up to uh, Paul's statement there we'll back up End of verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 says, But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to this, uh, to sound doctrine, that's verse 10. Now remember verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. So here's one of those examples that we've, uh, to understand a meaning, we have to understand the bigger context and what's around it. Um, and so the gospel is indeed glorious, but what makes it glorious? I think Paul gives us some indication here is, is that we know that there's going to be a judgment day. And the resurrection gives us evidence of that, Acts 17, 30, and 31. Now, what we find here is that Paul says, you know what, the law is good. Why is it good, Paul? Because it tells us what's acceptable to God and what's not acceptable to God. Wouldn't it be cruel uh, for God not to tell us what's right, what he accepts, what he doesn't accept? And then we get to judgment day and he said, well, I don't like that. I don't like the way you live. Well, I didn't know. You didn't tell me. Well, duh, well, just tough luck. I didn't like it. But it's it, it, part of the glorious aspect of the gospel is that he does tell us. He does tell us what he doesn't uh, like. He does tell us what he will not accept. And Paul goes on, and he says um, in verse 9, he says, The law, or the gospel, was not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless. Those that just going to do what they're going to do, they don't care about God in any way, shape, or form, insubordinate. I think those, that would be those that are not willing to submit to what the gospel actually teaches. And we, you know, I, I, I've been asked many times, I may have made reference to this, is that, you know, over the years that I've been, that I've been preaching, I've had countless people say, why are there so many churches? I believe this one term here that Paul puts forth, I think that gives us some insight, is that so many are just simply insubordinate to what God's Word says. They want their own churches, they want their own doctrine, they want their own morality, they want you know, whatever that they want, uh, but are insubordinate to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He goes on, the ungodly for sinners, Unholy and profane. Murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, and mass slaves. I, I, I think we can get all that. You know, who, who, who thinks highly of someone that kills their parents? Huh? Fornicators. Those that are having sex, it's not married. That's very simply what that means. You know, but we have this uh, rash of, of idea out there. Um, in a religious world, that's insubordinate to what God's uh, gospel says. So, well, it's all right if you love each other. That's fine. God knows your heart. Yeah, he does know your heart. knows it's insubordinate to what his word says. He knows it's unholy. He knows it is profane. He knows it's a lawless heart. And that we want to live the life we want to live, and we're expecting God and all of his love and mercy to just accept us, even though we don't want anything to do with the God. All right, because here's something else. I want to skip over two of these, all right, or one more. He said, kidnapper. Who thinks a kidnapper ought to be strung up with a short rope and a high tree? 
Nobody likes to kidnap her. But my friend, let us understand that kidnapping is just as wrong as fornicating. And he also says sodomites. All right, no, here we get into homosexuality. And so here we find that kidnapping, killing our parents, is just as sinful, it is just as wrong as fornication and sodomy and homosexuality. Liars, perjurers, and anything that is contrary to sound doctrine. So the acceptance of all these things, my friend, is contrary to what God said, which makes it when we reject that, now we become insubordinate to the word of God. And then it comes back to verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. It's a glorious thing that God has instructed us and told us these things are wrong. And the Bible is for our good to teach us that these things are wrong and that God is not going to accept this. We have this big push in our, in, in our society to, set, to accept you know, all this gender dysphoria. Whatever someone thinks they are, that's what they are. And you need to accept me. You're know, mutilating my body. Um, uh, so that I can be uh, the, the opposite sex, and, and you just need to accept that. I'm sorry, I'm not going to accept that. Why? Because it's against the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, my friend, we need to understand this. You know, some of these things most people would probably you know, jump right on board with. But what about fornicating? You, are you shacked up with somebody? Are you living with somebody that, 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 that you don't share the last name? That's fornication. It's just as bad as kidnapping. You see, sin has no levels. And our feelings in our heart does not alter, does not change what God's word says. If God said it's wrong, it's wrong. And so let us not be insubordinate to what the word of God um, has said. But rather, instead, let us be thankful for it. Conform ourselves to it. Be subordinate instead of insubordinate to the Word of God. Because God's not going to give us a pass based on our feelings or what we think we are and what's okay in here. But it's a glorious thing that God's given us this Word, given us this gospel, which is sound. It means it's safe, it's secure, it's solid for our spiritual and our eternal well-being. There's your dose of God's Word today. I'm going to leave, leave you with that. I hope it'll get your wheels turning. Second Timothy chapter 1 is where we were at this morning. And so, Lord willing, uh, Monday, uh, we'll get back and we'll get us another dose of God's Word. Hope you all have a great day and we'll see you then.